if everyone can stand with us and get ready to praise and worship. Everyone at home watching live, we encourage you to stand and raise your hands and fill your home with praise for God. All right, guys, good morning. If I could just share a quick word to you. I just was thinking about worship. And like, what is worship? Worship is unprovoked love. I went to prayer with God one day, and I said, I want to worship you the way you want me to worship you. And in that prayer, he gave me a fast response, and he told me, worship you like the way you worship your wife. And I was kind of like appalled by it, like, what do you mean? I don't worship my wife. But then he began to explain, what is it when you're sitting on the couch looking at your wife, and then you tell her out of nowhere, I love you? What's the response we get? Men, for most parts, we just expect to love you back, and then that's it. But women, they say, why? And so then begin, I begin to, to tell her, I love you because you take care of my family, because you're a good wife to me, because you take care of the household. And then in that, God shared to me, when you worship me, tell me what I've done in your life. Tell me where I've been uh, king in your life, where I've protected you, where I've healed you in your life. So today, as we come to worship, bring to remembrance what God has done in your life. Let him be exalted. Let the name of Jesus Christ be exalted through every issue. Lay aside this past week of what happened, because that doesn't deserve to be in the presence of God. But bring your spirit, bring your joy. And as we worship God, just watch things move. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. It's ordained by you, Father, as we set our hearts to worship you, as we set our hearts to give you glory and give you praise. We thank you, Lord, that in this house, the name of Jesus Christ is exalted above all things, Lord. We magnify you for what you have done in our lives, the time that you have healed us, the time that you have protected us, the time, Father, that you have set us apart, Father, from others, Lord, just to bring peace in our household, Father. To you, we give you all glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, church, let's worship this morning.
never danced before. Amen. I'm talking to myself. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's doing something. I know I'm not the only one that feels it. He's here. Hallelujah. Oh, that's okay. Come on and lift your hands. Church. Thank you, Lord. Let him do what he wants to do in you today. Come on now. Let the walls fall down. Tear down the walls, tear down the walls. Hallelujah. I'm a way making God. I'm a way making God. I'm a way. church we're not we're not supposed to move from this moment just take a few more seconds just lift your hands in this place just lift your worship hearing in my spirit I hear these words I'm reversing the lie I don't know what that means I don't know who that applies to I don't know what that applies to it could be health it could be words spoken over you but I keep hearing that in my spirit I'm reversing the lie whoever that's for just take that just just take another second just receive that he's doing something church We don't rush these moments with him to just to get through songs. We sit and we wait and we let him move. Oh, he's not afraid of our story. God's not afraid of your story. not afraid of your story. Hallelujah. The praise and worship team wasn't expecting this, but you know, I prayed this morning and I said, if the Holy Ghost wants to interrupt our service, he can interrupt our service. Amen. Hallelujah. But this has never happened to me before. And I say that because I believe God is bringing a lot of us up to places we've not been yet. But as we were worshiping, I had this whole vision happen before me. And, and I could see this individual and I kept hearing chatter, 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 chatter. 
And they would go to the TV and chatter, 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 chatter. Then they'd go to their laptop and then open it up. And Instagram would come forward and Facebook would come forward and emails would come forward and be chatter, chatter, chatter. And there has to be that place in the midst of the chatter the Spirit of God is speaking. And we have to position ourselves to remove ourselves from the chatter and and psalm says be still be still be still and know that i am god well what what do you got to be still it could be your mind it could be your emotions but but we the church we have a different voice we listen to not the voice of the chatter He's moving in the chatter. If you can be still to hear his voice in the midst of the chatter. And I'm going to let you know, (laughs) over the last six months, there's been a lot of chatter going off in my brain. (laughs) And again, you have to choose what you're going to listen to. And, And if your head and your mind is just going and going and going, There's been many times in my walk with the Lord that I've been in my car and I've just shouted, shut up. Mind, shut up. And listen to the voice of the Word of God. That is what produces, that is what turns seas into highways, is the voice of the Lord and following that. So I just want to encourage you this morning, you watching live stream don't let the chatter overtake you choose to remove yourself from it and right now where you're at right now let's give him all that we are today amen amen thank you
we will not be shaken. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside. Open up my eyes in wonder and show. Just wanna sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never wanna leave. Oh, I'm not here for this. Jesus.
healed in your presence. Bodies are restored in your presence now. Mountains are moved in your presence. Hallelujah. Get out of my way. We say mountains be removed. Mountain be removed. Speak to it, speak to it, speak to it. Mountain be removed. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I have faith to believe that when I say mountain be removed, it's gone. Jesus, so do you, but do you believe it, do you operate in it, move, move, move in the gifts he's given you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. Come on. Don't be afraid to move. He needs us to move. He needs us to move. Hallelujah. Oh, he's so good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Good morning. Isn't he faithful? He's a faithful God. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all can testify? We serve a faithful God. Amen. Amen. Turn around to someone and tell them he's a faithful God. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't feel like you're under too much pressure, but look up, look up, look up. The Bible says in your salvation draws nigh. Hallelujah. Well, we welcome you this morning. God bless you. It's good to have you with us today. For those of you live streaming, we welcome you and your families. For those here with us in our service, we welcome you this morning. And I'm excited for the word. Amen. I'm excited. You know, last week it's like, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's so good to be here. It's so good to see your faces. Pastor Darrell sends his love wanted to let everybody know he's thinking of you, praying for you, and uh, it's just miraculous to see the improvements that are happening, and, and uh, don't, don't hold me to it, but maybe in a week or two, he'll be back with us, so uh, that's, that's how close we are, so thank you so much, and again, we welcome you this morning. You may be seated. If this is your first time to be with us at Cornerstone, if this is your first time to log in and and watch online we want to know about it so if you're in person on your way out of the service today stop by the information desk they have a gift waiting there for you and uh, the, for those of you that are live streaming for the first time just put a little comment out there let us know uh, this is your first time and we welcome you again this morning elder price come on let's give our elder a round of applause this morning thank you You know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's so much better to be here in person. Can't you, uh, don't you agree? Um, you know, you, you watch it live streaming, and you sit on the edge of your sofa, you listen to the Word, and you get into it. But when you're in the presence of God, and, um, amongst the saints, 
there's just no there's no substitute for the it doesn't mean that the glory of God can't come into your living room while you're sitting there but uh, but the Bible says where two or three are gathered together he's in the midst so you're pretty much guaranteed that he's going to show up when you're in the house of God so it's so much better you know the the scripture reminds us about uh, in Proverbs it says honor the Lord with your wealth of your first fruits of all your crops and your barns will be filled with overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine you know we give because that's number one God created us as beings that worship the Lord and I had shared this with you that even those nations in the world if you go back 1,000 2,000 years even before the uh, Christ came you know you know to the earth that foreign lands and people were constantly giving and offering things up to an offer you know to, to a God or gods or beings or entities or spirits that they knew not of but it was just because it was put inside the heart of man to worship a creator a being and something other than themselves but thank God that we have instructions in the word to tell us exactly how to make that work and do it properly and so with that being said if if, uh, if you, anyone needs an offering envelope at this moment and I think gentlemen are we gonna are we gonna pass out the buckets or are we gonna we're gonna bring them up forward okay you know we're still kind of in this transition thing right now with with COVID so I'm having to, to check with folks and and find out what the appropriate protocols are so but you know God is a merciful God and a loving God and the wonderful thing is that we have a covenant with him and he's our source and that's everything in our lives that's our financial uh, needs uh, jobs health you know, we have a covenant with him so God is faithful and just on those those things show them if you would hallelujah thank you Lord so if you would at this time if we'd like you to, to come forward just you know a row at a time and, and and drop off your gifts now I do want to remind you I asked my wife this morning about ways to give and she said that we've been giving online for 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 for, for some time and and I'm going to encourage you that if you haven't done so and you know and it's and you would like to make that transition we'd like to encourage you to, to take this information if you're home and you're not sure exactly how to do that I know this that you can just take a snapshot of the screen so right now we've got it up there you just take a snapshot and uh, on your your phone or your tablet and you'll have that information but you know um, it's a wonderful time that we live when you know you think about it in the days of old where you had to go before the priest and they had to make an offering and they had to sacrifice uh, a lamb or a turtle dove or something like that and they had these huge lines in the temple I didn't have an air-conditioned temple and that was the way that they gave in those days today we can simply go on our phone our tablet our computer and uh, give the first fruits to the Lord and if you just have to remember also the Bible says that the first fruits are holy so it's not just something that we do like we're paying bills. They are holy. And we just thank God for that. So, hallelujah. Well, I think that's everyone. Let's, let's go ahead and uh, bow your heads and pray. We're going we're gonna to pray over the offering. And we just give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. And Father, I thank you that we're in your presence today. And, Father, that these tithes, these offerings, these gifts, Father, are meant to sow seed into the kingdom. Father, the Bible says that there might be meat in your house. And, Father, I thank you that the needs of the families are met, that they're prosperous, that they have jobs, they're protected. And the Bible tells us that it's worship, and worship stops and stills the offender. And, Father, we thank you that these funds go and are sown according to your word, that we're able to individually and collectively as a body do everything that we're called as a ministry and individually and collectively and father we thank you we praise you we love you in jesus name hallelujah i'd like to go ahead and take this time to introduce pastor robbie 
and let's give him a warm welcome this morning. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. I think I do. Can you hear me? Amen. <clears throat> just if you just just bow your heads for just just a few minutes here. You know, I had someone ask me one time. I said, "Do you ever do you still get nervous after all these years of ministering?" And 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 the answer to that is yes, I do. But I don't get nervous because I know that my gift flows. But at the same time, too. The uneasy part is I don't want to miss God because if I miss what God has then you miss what God has for you but all this week the last two weeks have just been a testimony a blessing and favor upon our family The Holy Spirit is here. And there's one thing about Holy Spirit is he's not, he's not forceful. He won't go where he's hindered or where he's quenched. And so I don't want to miss this moment. And I've asked Gerard to stay up here for a reason. You know, I believe that in today's day and age, more than ever before that we need not just more of God but we need less of the things that distract less of the things as Pastor Catherine said a while ago I told her I said you pretty much preached my sermon I could just go home and not you know and that's good it just means that we're on the same page amen so I just want to stay in this solemn attitude of worship if we can, if you will, with me. And I just want to share some scriptures with you. And over the past two weeks, I told my wife, I said, Jen, you know, this has been two of the longest short weeks of our lives. It feels that way because last weekend we were here with our, our, our oldest son and, and his wife and, and our, our precious grandbabies. And they, they just moved into their, into their new home. And through my emotions, I just had to lift my hands and thank God for the blessings that he's bestowed upon my, my children and my family because it's nothing that I've done within myself, but it's because of his grace and his mercy. You see, Clay was supposed to be a mistake. Clay was... I might be transparent here this morning because I want to show you the grace of God. And even though David had committed every sin in the book, from adultery to murder to everything, God still called him a man after his own heart. Because it had a heart towards God. He knew how to worship and he knew how to repent. And that's been a picture of my life. Jenny and I should have been a statistic. We should have been one of those that got married and divorced because we were too young. We were just too young. A lot of people thought. Some people said, well, the last two weeks, and a month later, the last six months, and six months later, well, they'll, they'll maybe they'll last a year, and here we are almost 34 years later. And then as I began to look around me and I began to see the wonders of God and, and just the, the and hear my children talk of the blessings of God and talk about the podcasts that they're listening to and, and, and the things that they're putting into their lives. Just blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing. And in and, and this past week I I was and I wasn't gonna share this, but I'm going to because I believe that when God does something you need to share it with people. And I was at the office and my boss called me. And he said, how much, how does, the, how, how, how does this much more a week sound to you? 
And at that point in time, I was taking care of customers and I was going to and fro doing what I needed to do. I've got 15 people that work, work alongside me. And so I was busy. And in that moment, I said, well, you know, I, I don't know, Jimmy, I need to call you back. Let me, let me call you back. I just can't, I can't do, I can't put it all together right now. You know how that is. So I sat down at my desk and I began to calculate what all that added up to. And it literally blew my mind. It is the biggest increase I have ever had in my life. Now, let me say this. In order for me to get that increase, I had to prove myself to him. And it's not because I'm smarter than anybody else. It's not because I'm better than anybody else. It's because I'm right where I need to be. It's because I listen to the voice of God. Little did I know that when I came to that establishment, that his son who was running the place at that time was very sick. I didn't know that. That he would go on home to be with the Lord at 36 years old. I stepped into his provision and God put me into my provision. And then I, I'm like, God, what is, where is, I know where it's coming from, but it's like, this is, this is so much. You know how when God blesses you so much and you're just like, okay, what else? All right, something's not right here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what, what's, what's going to happen next? I'm just being, I'm sharing my heart with you this morning. And I was talking with Jen and she said, well, you don't know this. For about the last two months, I've been praying favor over our family. Favor, 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 favor. And I sat down and I looked all the way across the line, all the way across the board. And everywhere I looked, I saw favor. And yesterday morning, I had the opportunity to speak to about 20 or 25 men at Ridgeway Fellowship, at their men's fellowship. And then yesterday afternoon, I had the privilege of honoring a, a precious man who had gone home to be with the Lord. And then Jenny and I went to the mall and I'm walking into Macy's. We just went to pick up a couple of things. We don't go walk around at the mall. So we, I walked in there and, and I saw all these empty shelves, Pastor Kaffer. All these empty shelves. And I saw the shoe, the shoe department was like there was, there was very little shoes there. And for a moment, I thought to myself, is this the reality that we're headed towards in the flesh? Is this the harsh reality that we're looking at and that we're facing? Difficult to get things, difficult. In the automotive, automotive industry right now, it's, it's very difficult to get parts to repair trucks, to repair cars, because of the pandemic. But there is one avenue. There is one avenue. There is one channel. There's one circuit, if you will, that continues to flow. And it flows straight from the throne room of God. And if we walk in the spirit, as the word of God says, you'll not we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you follow and chase the things of God, as Matthew chapter 6 tells us to, to seek him first, everything else will flow in and through your life. Every time I sat down to study for this morning, it was like Ichabod. I was getting nothing. And I thought, God, what is going on? The Lord said, I want to move. I want to move. The question is, are people making room for me to move? Are they, are they taking the time? As she said this morning, that was the title of my sermon, Take the Time. Go figure. And it's not about just taking the time to be a blessing to someone. It's not just about taking the time to be that Jesus that somebody needs. You can't be who you don't know you are. And I can't tell you who you are. 
I could stand up here all day long and preach to you about who you are in Christ. But you have to find out who you are in Christ. And the only way that you're going to do that is to spend time with him. The only way you're going to do that, be able to find out, discover who you really are, is to take the time to spend with him. And let me say something. Let me just say this. We spend time with all kinds of things in our lives that are not productive at all. If they are productive, they're productive for a moment. We might gain that one thing. You know what Solomon said? He said, I've had it all. I've had it all. The richest, most wealthiest man in the Bible said, I've had it all. It's all vexation of spirit. All of it. It means nothing. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul? There's something inside of you that needs to be nourished. There's something inside of you that needs to be formed and made into the person that God wants you to be. And if we continue to just keep moving and keep going in the direction that we're going, unless we're going His direction, we're going in the wrong direction. And as I stood before those men yesterday morning, I asked them, I said, let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you really sat down and you asked God, God, what do you have for my life right now? Lord, what do you want me to do? What do I need to do? You know, we talk about the will of God. We talk about finding the will of God for your life. And church, I have seen so many people get lost in that and caught up in that that they don't even know who they are. Because I'm so trying to find this big thing. God wants me to be Joel Osteen. God wants me to be who, whoever, who, whatever, whoever's name or whatever you want to put on it. But when it all boils down to it is God has given you a platform where you are to build upon. And that is his will right now for you. And unless you, unless you start to build on that platform, you're not going to reach the place where he wants you to be. You see, when I let go of what I want, when it's no longer as important to me as it was before. I've had an Isaac in my life for a long time that I've needed to lay down. And I'm going to tell you what it is, because it's between me and God. But this morning, standing right there, the Lord said, it's time to lay your Isaac down. The only reason that Abraham was able to hold on to Isaac is because he was willing to let him go. And there's things in every one of our lives right now that we've held on to. That we think is the end all, be all. That we think is, yes, that's, that's exactly what I want. That's exactly where I need to be. God is calling you to let go of it. To lay it down. You know why? Because that is standing in the way of him being able to do in and through your life what he wants to do. I don't know if it's because you're, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It may be, you may be so consumed with believing God for a spouse that you're, that you're all wrapped up in that, that you're forgetting that he's your spouse before anyone else is. Before my, my, my boys met their, their spouses, Jenny and I prayed from the day that they were born to the day that they met their spouses. And we've been through some hard times together. There's times that we question. But God has done some amazing things. And it's nothing that I've done and she has done other than make room for him. To make room for him to move. To give him the chance to do what he wants to do. And let me tell you something. God can do something in one second that it would take you 10 years to work through. Did you hear what I just said? There are words that we sung in these songs today that a lot of times I don't even think that we really listen to and take heart of. Take to heart. Nothing else, nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. Lord, I'm not here for blessings. Uh-oh. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. He already did what he's going to do. And, if, you know, if, if, I, if he doesn't give me anything else in my life, 
And that's the one thing that came to mind, Pastor Catherine, when I was walking through that story yesterday. It's like it's not about what I see with my eyes. It's not about whether things are on the shelf or not for me. It's about how I'm going to handle those, those times and situations in my life. What's going to carry me through? Is it going to be my job? No. Because that may not be there tomorrow. Is it going to be any man? No. Because man comes and goes. It's going to be that direct connection that I have with God the Father. And we've got to quit walking around wondering, just, well, well, woe is me. Why, why isn't God moving in my life? What, there is a reason. There is a reason. You hear what I'm telling you? There's a reason. But see, that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to walk around and, and wonder. He wants your mind to wander. The battle is in the mind. Bryce told me before the service, he said, I, I got a scripture that I want to get tattooed on my, on my chest. Come on, somebody. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's the washing of the water of the word. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. You see, if the anointing's not there, nothing's going to happen. We might as well close the doors, turn the AC off, turn the sound off, and go home. We're going to worship some more this morning. We're going to worship some more. I think I've already said enough. I, I, like I said, I wouldn't have had to say anything. Because God wants to do what he wants to do this morning. Amen. And listen, you can be like the man that was sitting by the waters that couldn't move. And they asked him, they said, well, why, why don't you get in the water? By the pool of Bethesda, I believe. And when the waters would trouble, that was the time to get in the water because that's where, that's where the miracle was. That's where the healing was. And he's sitting at the side. He says, everybody else can get in the water, but I can't. One second. One second God did for him what those waters could not do. And we're not crippled. <laughs> Come on. We can move. We want him to move. Are we going to move? It's time for us to move. Don't be like the one that's sitting there by the Frio River just watching everybody else tube down the river. You don't know how cool and refreshing the water is until you get in the water. You know what it's like to ride a tube down a river until you decide to do it. Some of you might say, oh, I'm afraid of water. Well, you know, usually it's two to three feet. Just stand up. Huh? The river is flowing. The river is flowing. Do you hear what I'm telling you? The river is flowing. It's been flowing. And the question is, are you going to get in it? Or are you going to wait for somebody to come along and, oh, well, come on, honey. Come on. Let me read you a scripture. Proverbs 6, verses 6 through 8, it says... Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. Get this. It has no commander, no overseer, or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. James 4, 13 through 17. It says, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. But why? Do you not even know what will happen tomorrow? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. But instead you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. I'm not here for blessing. I'm not here for blessing. Lord, you don't owe me anything. But if anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. How many times have I prayed and you prayed, lead me not into temptation, 
Lord, I don't want to sin before you. And yet it's the things that we don't do that sin to us. Paul said, the things that I should do, I don't do. The things that I shouldn't do, I find myself doing. We have to remember that it's not about us, it's about him. It's not my kingdom I'm building, it's his. So whatever you need this morning, whatever you have need of, whatever you need to let go of, whatever you need to lay down, whatever you need God to do in your life this morning, he will do. The question is, is how much of you does he have? And are you willing to make room for him?
Bible says that no man can be saved unless the Spirit of God draw him. And this morning, if you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you, you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, it's not about being in church. It's about having a personal relationship with Him. So if that's you this morning, we're going to pray here in just a moment. If that's you, right where you are, we're going to give our life to Jesus Christ. He gave everything. He gave it all. He won victory for us when he defeated death, hell, and the grave. There is a much higher way of living and walking in provision, and it's, that's the only way. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father except through me. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I am the door to the Father. So if that's you here today, I want you to just lift your prayer to the Lord as we pray together. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, I come before you today confessing that I'm a sinner, confessing my need for you. I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you rose on the third day for me. I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I make you 
right now in this moment the Lord of my life thank you for saving me thank you for redeeming me in Jesus name amen I'll stay right where you are when if you pray that prayer for the first time whether you via live stream nation or in the house today let us know Give us a comment on the chat. On the chat, let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to minister to you. Did anyone in the house receive Jesus this morning for the first time? Back there in the back, Hallelujah. We definitely want to. Brother, the Bible says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over you. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and His Word declares that no one can take your name out of that book. Amen? Hallelujah. Is there anyone in the house that needs the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Anyone? You want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? He's here. Hallelujah. If you need prayer this morning, I'm gonna, we're going to pray over these that are down here already. Don't leave. Don't go anywhere. But if you need prayer, if you need healing in your body, if you're believing for something, for God to do something for you, in and through you in your life, come on down. We're going to pray for you. As they continue to sing, as they continue to worship. I'm about you, but I sure appreciate our worship team. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. We're going to pray for you. Hallelujah. to our first love today.
will do And I just want you Nothing else Nothing else And nothing else And nothing else your hands, church. Lift it. Sing it out. I just want you. created for it's what we were created for 
of God is here. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I speak God's favor over you. I speak his blessing over you. I speak his prosperity over you. I speak his peace over you. Go this day. Go this day in him. Amen. Amen. Until we meet again, church, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Hallelujah.